Hey everyone, I have found some really inspiring Pelicanus news headlines for you. Actually, I've found about twice as many uh, as I have listed, but I had to choose the most incredible to fit in this episode. And to be honest, these are some of the biggest news pieces I have ever seen. And I think as a planet, we will be seeing the repercussions of these for a long time. Alright, I've categorized them as big money, innovations, drawdown, and the last one is COVID updates, but I think I only have one in there. Alright, so for this first one, in big money, China to allocate $57 billion to environmental protection. (laughs) According to Reuters.com, China's finance ministry will allocate a total of $57.22 billion to ecology and environmental protection in 2020. China will also promote the official launch of the National Green Development Fund and step up efforts to establish trans-regional compensation mechanisms for ecological conservation in the Yangtze and Yellow River basins. That's huge. All right, similarly, the EU pledges to raise 20 billion euro a year to boost biodiversity. According to theguardian.com, the European Commission has committed to protecting 30% of the EU's land and oceans by 2030 as part of the European Green Deal. The 10-year plan includes commitments to reduce the use of chemical pesticides by 50%, plant 3 billion trees by 2030, and reverse the decline in pollinators. Within the 30% protected areas, a third of land and sea will be under what they call quote-unquote strict protection, meaning there should be no human intervention besides minimal management to keep the area in good condition for wildlife. Wow. And the last one in the big money category... This is kind of difficult to get your head around, actually. Uh, The world's biggest wealth fund dumps $3 billion in fossil fuels and a major Brazilian miner from its portfolio. Norway's $1 trillion wealth fund is doubling down on its climate action by making deeper cuts to its fossil fuel exposure. Norway's fund, which owns about 1.5% of listed stocks worldwide, was built on the country's revenue from oil and gas production. It has sought to take a leading role on responsible investment, with ethical guidelines spanning from a ban on tobacco and some weapons to restrictions tied to human rights and environmental issues. The central bank, which manages the fund, even argued for a full exit from oil stocks in order to reduce Norway's exposure to oil price risk. But the proposal was watered down by the government last year, sparing the world's biggest oil producer. Still pretty incredible. All right, I think these next uh, three are my favorite, though. These are in the innovations category. Um... First one coming from standard.uk.com, Coca-Cola and Carlsberg introduced plant-based bottles that degrade in a year. A collection of global corporations has backed a project aimed at developing plant-based biodegradable bottles by 2023. Coca-Cola, Carlsberg, and L'Oreal are among companies supporting the Paper Bottle Project, executed by Dutch renewable chemicals company Avantium, paper packaging developer, and bottle manufacturers ALPLA. The project will use plant sugars to develop more eco-friendly plastics than those made with fossil fuels. The plastic, known as PEF, could be used to line cardboard bottle from the inside to make them both functional and biodegradable. This PEF reportedly has better thermal barrier properties than standard PEF. The plant-based polymer is 100% recyclable. It will also rot within a year if using a composter, and within a few years if simply left outside. But it should also be recycled where possible. Standard plastics uh, can take hundreds of years to decompose. All right. 
second headline in this category is engineers develop near zero emissions engine technology. Southwest Research Institute engineers have developed the next generation of clean diesel engine technology to reduce hazardous nitrogen oxides, NOx, and carbon dioxide emissions while minimizing fuel consumption. Working with regulatory agencies, vehicle manufacturers, and suppliers, SWRI combined engine modifications with integrated after-treatment technology and control strategies to reach near-zero emission levels. SWRI developed the, te the technology for, um, actually, for our friends at the California Air Resources Board, a state organization charged with combating air pollution. Uh, I really like this next one. Um, Scientists successfully develop heat-resistant coral to fight bleaching. This one coming out of Australia. A team of scientists has successfully produced in a laboratory setting a coral that is more resistant to increased seawater temperatures. The team included researchers from CSIRO, Australia's National Science Agency, the Australian Institute of Marine Sciences, and the University of Melbourne. The team made the coral more tolerant to temperature-induced bleaching by bolstering the heat tolerance of its microalgae symbionts, tiny cells of algae that live inside the coral tissue. This will be, I think, game-changing in the fight for um, ocean biodiversity. All right, next category, what I'm calling drawdown. Equinor, Shell, and Total sign off on building world's first carbon, uh, sorry, first carbon capture network. This is, this is huge. International oil giants hand in $685 million Northern Lights plan to Norwegian government to develop project to capture 5 million tons of CO2 a year from European heavy emitters. The flagship CCS development, uh, carbon capture uh, development, the lead-off well for which was drilled late last year, could eventually capture and store up to 5 million tons of CO2 from heavy emitters from around EU in a giant saline aquifer south of the Troll Offshore oil and gas field in the North Sea. That's pretty special. All right. Uh, according to Yale... The largest solar project in the U.S. gets its green light. The United States' largest solar project to date received final approval from the Department of the Interior, clearing the way for the $1 billion, 690-megawatt array to break ground on federal land in the Mojave Desert in Nevada. The project, which also includes battery storage, is expected to produce enough electricity to power 260,000 homes and offset the greenhouse gas emissions of about 83,000 cars annually. Construction of the Gemini Solar Array is expected to start this year and last until 2022 or 2023. The first phase of the project will cover 11 square miles in the Mojave Desert, about 30 miles northeast of Las Vegas. And for the last headline in the last category of COVID updates, daily global CO2 emissions were cut to 2006 levels during the height of COVID. The amount of CO2 being released by human activity each day fell by as much as 17% during the height of the COVID crisis in early April, a new study shows. This means daily emissions temporarily fell to levels last seen in 2006. In the first four months of the year, it estimates the global emissions from burning fossil fuels and cement production were cut by 1,048 metric tons of CO2, or 8.6%, compared with 2019 levels. Wow. All these are... Um, <laughs> truly inspiring to me. I really love these trends and uh, I hope sharing them brings hope and optimism to your life as well. Thank you and uh, hope to talk to you soon.